Hi, my name is Casey and I'm with Endurance On Demand. I'm here to teach you a little bit about mobility before you go on your run. As you go through this mobility flow with us today, you'll see a piece of each exercise. Once we've completed that exercise, we'll pause for a moment and we can move to the next. You can flow through this as you would like, as you get comfortable with it, but we'll probably take about 10 to 15 minutes in real life for you to accomplish this before you go on your run. When you're done, we recommend that you walk for about five to 10 minutes, depending on the uh, exertion level of your run for that day so that you can be fully warmed up and ready to go before you're on the road. The first exercise is called good mornings. Some of you may want to call it good afternoons if you run in the afternoon, but we're going to pretend like it's morning. Hands will be on your ears. You'll have your shoulder blades pulled back and down so you cannot see your elbows in the peripheral. Knees are unlocked, not totally bent, just soft, and your feet are flat on the ground. Weight is in the midfoot. As you try to take your upper body parallel to the ground, you're going to push your hips back towards the wall behind you, weight staying in the midfoot. And then you come back by squeezing your glutes to stand up. You continue that motion not anything fast, slow and controlled. It's meant to stretch the hamstrings and activate the glutes as you go. Maybe about five to 10 of these as you see fit, depending on how your body is feeling, whether you need to stretch something out or activate that low back just a little bit more. You shouldn't feel any pain or pressure in your low back as you do this good morning stretch. Next up is cook squats. This is going to help activate the quads and give you some mobility, not only in the hips, but the thoracic spine as well. So when you do the cook squat, your feet will be slightly wider than parallel. Feet are facing forward. However, if you have abducted hips or your hips move outward, you're gonna turn your toes maybe about five degrees out. When you squat down as low as you can, hands will touch the ground, weight is in your heels, don't be afraid if the knees go over the toes, that just means some extra mobility in the ankles. Once you've touched your hands to the ground, you're going to reach up towards the sky and then touch the hand to the ground. Again, reach up towards the sky and then stand back up activating those glutes. That's the cook squat. I'll show you a few more rep uh, repetitions of this as you go through. So squat down, reach up, look, reach up, look, and then activate those glutes to come back up. The next exercise in this progressive series is mobility squats. So we're going to take those cook squats, bring them a little bit wider. So this time take the feet wider than hip width. Feet are going to go out slightly, maybe not totally 45 degrees, but out and towards that direction. You're going to reach the arms up, you're going to bend, touch the toes, drop the hips as low as you can, lift the arms up, activate those glutes to stand up. So we're basically combining the good morning and the cook squat a little bit and allowing our hips to get deeper and deeper. Weight should still stay in your heels. Again, if those knees go over to your toes, it uh, doesn't matter very much. Continue that flow until you're comfortable and ready to move on to the next exercise. One of my favorite mobility exercises is inchworms. So we've progressed to this point, our body should be warm enough for us to start to take this to the ground. So at the end of a mat or end of your space, reach up tall, bend over at those hips, keeping the legs straight so you'll feel a hamstring stretch here, and then keeping the heels down as long as you can, you'll walk your hands out to a high plank position. If you'd like, you can drop the hips, look up to the sky, shoulders away from the ears, so you can get a little extra abdominal stretch here, and then pike the body back up. If you'd like, you can take a little calf stretch moment as well. Walk the hands all the way back to the feet with a straight leg, and then roll the body up one vertebrae at a time to standing. So again, reach up, bend over, walk the hands out, hips go to the ground. If you choose, pike the body back up, calf stretch if you choose, straight legs, walk the hands to the feet all the way back up. As you continue through this motion, you'll feel your body start to stretch out just a little bit in that dynamic position. Please note that when you come up to the pike, your hips are going back as far as they can towards the wall behind you. Continue through as you warm up. 
The final stretch in our series before you go off on your walk, before you go off on your run, is going to be the calf stretch. This does require some balance, so if you have trouble with balance, please grab a tree, a wall, maybe even a post if you're in the parking lot to help you through this exercise. You're going to keep the base leg flat on the ground, slight bend in the knee, don't lock it out. Dig into the ground with your big toe, but the whole foot should be on the ground. Big toe is for balance. Once you have that balance there, then you're going to reach for the opposite shoelaces, point, both, point your knees to the ground and keep your hips in alignment. Stretch that heel towards that glute. If you need some extra balance, some people prefer to take the hand up as well. If you would like an extra stretch in this hip flexor area, push that shoelace towards your base hand and pull that heel away from your glute. Big stretch in the hip flexor there. Once you're done, you can release and you'll find even deeper stretch in that quad from that position. When you're ready, you can switch to the other foot. Find that balance. Reach up if you need to. Pull away if you'd like that dynamic stretch. Bring back in for that quad stretch. And then continue on as you see fit. Then you get to go for your walk before you run. Thanks for watching. For more information, visit our website, enduranceondemand.com, or reach out to Coach Ray and Coach Casey.